Welcome to my YouTube channel. Learn at ease. In this video I will discuss a topic in biochemistry. Biomolecules, Amino Acids. Part 4. Properties of Amino Acids. The properties of amino acids that I will explain in this video are Solubility of amino acids Melting point of amino acids Taste of amino acids Optical properties of amino acids and Amino acids as amphilites, where I will also show you the titration curve of some amino acids. First property of amino acids that I will explain is solubility of amino acids. Most of the amino acids are usually soluble in water and insoluble in organic solvents. Despite of being soluble in water, amino acids can also be classified based on relative hydrophobicity, as hydrophobic or hydrophilic amino acids. The classification of amino acid based on their relative hydrophobicity is shown here. Where? Arginine, asparagine, aspartate, cysteine, glutamate, glutamine, glycine, histidine, lysine, serine, and threonine are categorized as hydrophilic amino acids. Whereas alanine, isoleucine, leucine, methionine, phenylalanine, proline, tryptophan, tyrosine, and valine are categorized as partially hydrophobic amino acids. The second property of amino acids that is melting point suggests that all the amino acids generally melt at higher temperatures often above 200 degrees celsius third property is taste of amino acids amino acids glycine alanine and valine are sweet to taste leucine is tasteless arginine and isoleucine tastes bitter monosodium glutamate abbreviated as msg and known as ajinomoto is used as a flavoring agent in food industry to increase taste and flavor. Some individuals who are intolerant to MSG encounter Chinese restaurant syndrome, where brief and reversible flu-like symptoms is observed. Let me show you fourth property, which is optical properties of amino acids. All the amino acids except glycine possess optical isomers due to the presence of asymmetric carbon atom. In nature all amino acids predominantly occur as L-isomers. Some amino acids also have a second asymmetric carbon, example are, isoleucine and threonine. I will now describe fifth and the last property that is, description of amino acids as amphilites. Amino acids can act as either acid or base, depending on the pH of the amino acid solution. Amino acids show titration curves similar to weak acid. Amino acids, have at least two dissociable protons, one from amino group, where NH3 plus can donate proton and get converted to NH2, and other from carboxylic acid group, where COOH can donate proton and get converted to COO-. Amino acids are the group of organic biomolecules that possess two oppositely charged functional groups they are called amphilites. So, amino acids, possess at least two pKa values. pKa is ionization constant, it's a pH value at which proton dissociates. The image shows the amino acid in cationic state, which exists when the pH of the solution containing amino acid is highly acidic. On addition of base, such as NaOH, pH of the solution increases. On increase in pH COOH loses its proton and gets converted to COO-. Here the cationic amino acid gets converted to tsvitarion state. The pH at which COOH loses its proton, is termed as pK1. On further increase in pH, NH3+, loses its proton and gets converted to NH2 and, the amino acid now exists in anionic form. pH at which NH3+, loses its proton, is termed as pK2. Some amino acids possess more than two pKa values, when it's, our chain possess functional group that possess dissociable protons. So, depending on the pH of the amino acid solution, it can act as acid or base. Further, pH at which an amino acid, possess net electric charge equal to zero, 
that value of pH is called isoelectric point or isoelectric pH for that amino acid and it is represented by pi. At isoelectric pH, amino acid exists as tsvitarion but the net charge on this tsvitarion form is zero. Isoelectric pH value is the average of amino acids pKa values and it is denoted by pi. Each amino acid has its characteristic. Isoelectric pH and pKa values. Amino acids have characteristic titration curves. The titration curve of glycine is shown in the image on the left. At the start of the titration curve, glycine exists in cationic form, where the pH is highly acidic. The titration begins by gradual addition of base such as NaOH, which will cause gradual increase in the pH. On increase in the pH, the carboxylic group loses its proton and the cationic glycine gets converted to tsvitarion state. At pH 2.3, the concentration of cationic and tsvitarion state of glycine is exactly same. And this pH is termed as pK1. On further increase in pH, amino group loses its proton, here tsvitarion state of glycine gets gradually converted to anionic state. At pH 9.6, the concentration of tsvitarion and anionic form of glycine is exactly same. And this pH is termed as pK2. This conversion of amino acid in cationic state to anionic state is due to increase in pH by addition of NaOH. Based on this pKa values, pI, that is isoelectric pH can be calculated. PI value is the mean of pKa values and it is the value of pH where the net charge on amino acid is zero. For glycine, PI value is the mean of 2.3 and 9.6, which is 5.97. So at pH 5.97, the net charge on glycine is zero. It is essential to remember that when pH equals PI, the amino acid exists in tsvitarion state, where the charge on oppositely charged amino group and carboxylic group is exactly same. For glycine, which has no ionizable group in its side chain, the isoelectric point is simply the arithmetic mean of the two pKa values. Whereas, for amino acids possessing ionizable functional group in their R chain, for example histidine, glutamate, etc., possess three pKa values. So these three pKa values are designated as pK1, for proton dissociation from COOH group on alpha carbon of amino acid. pK2, for proton dissociation from NH3 plus group on alpha carbon of amino acid. pKr, for proton dissociation from ionizable group in R side chain of amino acid. titration curve of histidine is shown here, where it possess three pKa values. The image on the left shows the titration curve of histidine, where it's pK1 equals to 1.82, pK2 equals to 9.17, pKr equals to 6.0. So, pI equals to the mean of pK1, pK2 and pKr which on calculation is found to be 5.66. So at pH 5.66 the net electric charge on histidine is zero. Similarly, titration curve of glutamate is shown here. The image on the left shows the titration curve of glutamate, where it's pK1 equals to 2.19, pK2 equals to 4.25, pKr equals to 9.67. So. PI equals to the mean of pK1, pK2 and pKr, which on calculation is found to be 5.37. So at pH 5.37 the net electric charge on glutamate is zero. This finishes up my description on the properties of amino acids. In my next video I will explain chemical reactions given by amino acids. Stay tuned to my channel. References used to prepare this video are given here. If you are new to my channel, please subscribe below. Thank you for watching my video. This video is prepared by Dr. Dwaypayan Goswami.